Hey guys, I'm Sebastian. I'm gonna show you um, some really cool things today about high hamstring tendinopathy, which I'll describe to you in first, I guess, is the, it's right around there. And I'll fully describe a little bit more in the, in the future here, but uh, uh, it's, I'm gonna show you an exercise that works very well for it as well. Uh, it's something that a lot of people struggle with and they, they, they tend to not get better, um, honestly, because a lot of times they're misdiagnosed. So we're gonna cover what it is as well as uh, an exercise that helps it. By the way, if you need any help with this, we are in Costa Mesa, California. We'd love to help you out. We do virtuals or in person. Uh, and at some point through this video, during the exercise typically, we're gonna have something comes up that is a free gift. Uh, we, have a lot of, we have a lot of people contact us in the comments that say, hey, this really worked, what do I do next? You do that next, okay? We're trying to get ahead of the curve here and make it so you guys get the good information that you really need. So take advantage of the free gift. So high hamstring tendinopathy, um, it's important to note then where it is. Again, here's the, we call this the gluteal fold. And so we're gonna go underneath it to the area of the quote unquote sit bone or the ischial tuberosity, okay? The hamstrings insert into there. And so that's where the hamstring tendons are. They're not other places. A big misconception is that the high hamstring tendinopathy will create pain in other areas. And that's incorrect. It won't be in the back, it won't be in that side joint, you won't feel it up into in, in the hamstrings here, and it won't certainly won't go past the knee. If it is, then you're looking at something that's probably referred pain, referred, referred pain from the back, the sciatic nerve, something of that nature, which we do have videos on as well. Um, and so that's something we can certainly help you with, but if we're talking about high hamstring tendinopathy today, we're not gonna cover that. So how do we possibly test it, um, other than just knowing that it is in the area right there? Um, also, um, so things that tend to bother it is, um, uh, actually, I'll show you the first test here, and then I'm going to stand up and send you actually, show you actually another one. And so one test here is like a long bridge. So here's the bridge that most people do. It's the long bridge. So it's going to be here, and you're pushing your heels into the floor. And you'll start to feel, as you start to go up and down, that you'll start to gradually increase pain in that exact location. You won't feel it going to the back. You won't feel it going to the hamstring. You'll feel it go into that exact area, and it will progress as you load it more, and that's important to note. As you progress a tendinopathy it, uh, with load, it will become more painful, okay? So that's the long one. Uh, let me stand here real quick and just show you uh, something else that tends to bother people is, is something like a forward bend. If it's this leg, it's gonna be here. So it's basically hip flexion combined with trunk flexion, okay? Or something they call like, like, like a, a single leg deadlift, like here, okay? So let's go back into the floor then. So high hamstring tendinopathies, what is something we can possibly do for it? Well, doing something like a, like a firm isometric contraction is probably a good starting point. Again, is this a good starting point for something like a low back or a referral? No, it's not. There's other things you can do that are way more productive. Um, but something like an isometric contraction is more helpful as it'll actually produce a pain relieving effect um, if you do it for repeated burst at high effort. So I'm gonna go back into the floor. So we can do that, actually, it's, it's, funny to, it's, it's funny how it goes this way, is that repeated loads bother it, but then loading it actually helps it. But notice it's a different type of load. We're getting creative how we load it. So we're gonna hold that high position there and push our heels into the floor and hold for 45 seconds. Not 15, not 30, not, not 130, roughly about 45, okay? It's a rough recipe that we're given, hold it for 45, and eventually come down, wait for two minutes. I do mean two minutes, okay? After that, do it four more times, five sets of that. Now, if this is too easy, hold that, okay? There's other ways to do this too, but obviously the floor one's the easiest. And so sometimes you gotta get it a little bit longer to get a little bit more load on the tendon itself. This one's probably appropriate for me because it's, it's hard to keep myself up, okay? So 45 seconds, five sets. Um, and two minutes break in between. So what you should notice is each time it gets, it feels like better, okay? Although you're loading the area, rest is actually really bad for tendinopathies, okay? But again, if it's referred pain around there, you got a lot more things to do that are productive than this. This is probably the last thing on the list. And it all comes down to knowing what to do and when, right? And so if you do need help with this, uh, we, are in, we are in Orange County, California, We'd love to help you out. We do virtual and in person. As you can see by this video, we can do a lot of things virtually. You don't need to do in person necessarily. Um, take advantage of the gift. It's at the bottom. Well, there's a little, link, a little thing that comes in the corner. And subscribe to the channel, okay? We have a link that comes up here in the corner too. Uh, YouTube provides us with a search function. It goes on the channel. As soon as you hit 
subscribe and notification. Actually, I think it's the bottom left now that I think about it. Um, but subscribe and you'll get all the videos as they come out. We have a bunch on hamstring, we have a bunch on low back, and a bunch on knees and all that stuff. So search to your heart's content, and we'll see you next time.